My name is Robert Bunkin. I'm a native New Yorker, born and raised in Queens. I now live in uh, Manhattan in uh, an artist community called West Beth. So I was always be a painter. I was painting since I was a kid. My first serious art teacher in terms of painting was Dick Cunningham, who taught at the Brooklyn Museum Art School. He taught color spot painting. That method still stays with me and is pretty important to me. I'm full of influences because I look at art a lot. I used to teach and still teach art history. I mean, obviously I love Rembrandt and I love Velasquez and uh, this huge list that goes on and on. But I would say of the lesser known artists that had a very profound influence on me uh, is uh, Giovanni Battista Moroni who is a Renaissance painter who specialized in portraiture. So Moroni has been an artist I've looked at a lot for many years and is very important to me. I love Degas, Mirandi. I love Lucian Freud. Freud has been a pretty direct influence on my work, but I'm interested in a lot of figurative art. I look at abstraction too, but it doesn't inform my work as much. I'm very interested in the specific and the real. So everything for me, to some extent is a portrait. So for example, when I paint a tree trunk, it's that specific tree trunk that I'm trying to paint. So I choose tree trunks, end up resembling human figures a lot. So I really looked at trees that had figurative, suggested figurative elements to me. And then when I paint sculpture, they're always figurative sculpture. I paint a detail, usually the head. So some of those paintings I did directly from the actual sculpture without any photography, which is the way I really prefer to work. And I also work that way when I do portraits. This was actually done onset of the COVID pandemic, but I was trying to project my dismay, the isolation. I was really kind of an emotional response this is a portrait of Dick Cunningham and his wife, Kitty. I painted it in Dick's studio. So those are his paintings. He's a serious figurative painter and there's a book out on his work now. My wife is a painter. Well, this came about because my wife said, you wanna paint me? <laughs> I'll sit for you. That is a gift to have someone sit for you if you're a figurative painter who likes to work from life. It ended up being a series of 10. For about half a year, I was painting these portraits of my wife. And they're meant to be uh, showing her in different moods, obviously different clothing, sometimes further away, sometimes like this one, very close. This was a diptych that I did earlier of her in my studio. The diptych was much larger, 25 by 25. So Angela uh, Muriel is also a painter, friend of mine. She's also a horticulturist. I decided to do something which I've done in other works of artists, which is I substituted the window for the painting of hers that we own. I like copying other people's paintings in my painting. This is an artist, her name is Karen Kapke, who I've been, doing what we, I call pose exchanges with. So I pose for her, she paints me. And then the next week I come to her studio and she poses for me and I paint her. This was a sequence of four paintings. Two of them were done on an orange ground on a very smooth uh, linen. And the other two had a blue ground. After gessoing, I coated it with one single color and allowed that color to come through and influence the colors. The blue ones were also painted on a very rough wove linen, like a, it almost looks like burlap. The thinking behind this also was that I sort of animate her head by having her strike different poses for each one. Usually when you think of portraiture, you do one painting of a person and that's supposed to be the definitive image, which of course it never is because we are living people and we change. So this gave me a chance to sort of give different views of one person, Bill Christ, uh, who's a figurative painter. And Bill and I have been painting each other for years now. I've painted Bill now for something like 10 years. So Bill Kennan is also a painter. I painted him also in his studio. What you're seeing behind his head in the upper part of the painting is actually my 
version of one of his paintings. It's a sort of a nocturne with the moon and these kind of tropical vegetation in silhouettes. And below that in the background is a piece of, a large piece of plastic that he covers his walls with because he paints directly on the wall. What was kind of interesting about the sessions with him was he almost always cocks his head one angle or another but for this painting, I started it with a straight head. So I said, okay, it would have been truer to Bill if I had his head slanted. But I kept saying, okay, make your head straight again, because that's the way I started the painting. That, that's an interesting thing about portraiture, when you, especially when you're working from life. I want to get not only a likeness, but a sense of the personality, which is a very intangible thing. If I really wanted to get him... I should have had his head tilted. I made an investment in the painting of him with a straight head. So he's got a straight head. But I think there's other aspects of him that are certainly in the painting. Gary is a potter, and that's his pottery in the background. I painted this in his studio. Well, all painting is abstract. That This arbitrary idea that representational painting isn't abstract. I mean, any representational painter knows that you're dealing with the same issues in a sense, except I think the added component in representation is that you're dealing with reality, which is very important to me. I mean, I have no interest in making an abstract painting. This one was pretty challenging. I finished it during COVID because you can actually see a mask hanging from one of the statues. The, the sitter is Orly Shiv. She's a sculptor. We met through a group that was doing a, a portrait group and the idea was to have these pose exchanges. So I posed for Orly for several head sculptures she did of me. And I painted her in her studio in Long Island City. So that's all her work in the background. This was the broadest panorama of her studio. I did other paintings of her with her sculpture, but this one has the most sculpture in it. I kind of like the idea of accepting what's there. I'm not like formally organizing things, and making a composition out of what just happens to be there. I saw this sculpture at the Blanton Museum in Austin, Texas. If I do travel, I always travel to see art. This little miniature bronze figurine at the Blanton Museum from ancient Rome of a dancer, and it really struck me. It had a kind of life and vitality that I really liked. So I photographed it from several different perspectives. I got sort of interested in also in some of the background information in the photograph, which really was produced by the, the display case and reflections, but I simplified them. And I love the twist in his body and his weird expression on his face. He has a very big hooked nose, uh, which you really only see in profile, but I tried to render that you know, foreshortened in the painting. I really feel that it's important for the artist to have freedom, which is one of the reasons why I don't do commissioned portraits. And of course, I want to get across something about the person who's sitting for me. It's very important. I feel it's a collaboration. Artists and models are in cahoots with each other. You know, they're, they're in, hopefully there's some collaboration going on. I certainly feel that with anybody who's agreed to pose for me that it's a collaboration and I'm not just controlling everything. I don't tell people what to wear. Obviously, if I'm painting them in their studio or their home, I don't tell them what the background should be like. I include all that because I think that's something important about what that person is all about. So to me, that's really important, but I never feel like I have the controlling gaze. I think that there's a reciprocity involved and hopefully as you're getting older, you're getting better as a painter. You know, the late Titian, I think of Titian as the father of modern art. It's same thing with late Rembrandt and late Halls and, you know, late Velasquez, their late Moroni too. It, not necessarily that you get looser, although that often happens. You say more with less and hopefully, it's hard to evaluate yourself, but I think I am a better painter. There's something to be said about looking at things intensively, learning, your craft as you go along. I used to teach art history and I was taught a lot about facture, meaning like how the paint or the clay or whatever the medium is, is put down because I believe that that's really what determines a, a great work of art 
anybody could paint a face and you can even make a decent likeness with a certain level of skill. But doing more than that, which I think is essential, is the goal, you know, getting to that where the, the person you're painting or whatever it is that you're painting, say like your Morandi painting still life, um, these are inanimate objects, but they're invested with the spirit. So I think the way you paint is very important. For me, that's really a, kind of essential. I'm not an artist who relishes being in the studio alone, just doing my thing. I, I kind of am a social person, social animal in a sense, and that's in my work. I always feel like I need to have some kind of relationship with what I'm painting, you know, whether it's a tree or a person or a sculpture of a person. So I'm not alone. I don't feel alone when I'm in the studio. I don't relish being alone.